Hey guys, how are you? First of all, welcome to all of you on our channel that is a GYAS. So friends, as you know that on our channel, we are covering the syllabus of UPSC Civil Services and for that purpose, we have started multiple series on our channel that target your prelims as well as mains. So currently, we have 10 series that focus on your prelims part and one series that focus on your mains part. So what we do in these prelims oriented series, we daily give you uh, uh, 10 questions. We daily cover 10 questions of one topic and in, in this way, we daily cover two topics. So in a day we cover 20 MCQs and uh, of, of two different topics and in this manner we will continue to do so till 31st May. So why the date chosen has been 31st May? Because on 2nd June is your prelims of UPSC CSC 2019 and we will end this series only one day before your prelims exam. So today we are going to discuss the economy lecture, the lecture number 3. So let's start, what are the, let's see what are the questions of today. The first question is consider the following about National Payments Corporation of India. First, it is a uh, non for not for profit organization second it is the umbrella organization for all retail payment systems in india third it con it conceived and launched the domestic card network rupee so we have to choose the correct answers from the codes given below so friends uh, let me tell you that national payment corporation of india yes it is a not for profit organization and also it is umbrella organization for all retail payment systems and also it launched the rupee network or, uh, the domestic card payment network rupee so all of these statements are correct so, so one two three so solution would be d so here is the explanation explanation so umbrella organization it uh, it is a not for profit organization that that uh, that is registered under the section 25 of the Companies Act 2019 and it plays a pioneering it played a pioneering role in, in, in kind of development of a domestic card payment network called Rupee. So now Rupee is a kind of uh, it facilitates uh, electronic payment in Indian banks and financial institutions and also competes with MasterCard and Visa. So these uh, are the details. So Rupee card uh, uh, kind of uh, get got a major boost through the Pradhan Mantri Jandan Yojana as Rupee cards were issued to all Jandan accounts. So let's move on to the second question. The second question is consider the following about cuts international uh, consumer unity and trust society so we have to choose which of the following statements are correct first it is the indian subsidiary of consumers international a non-profit organization third it works uh, as an autonomous attached advisory agency of ministry of consumer affairs and public distribution so friends we have to choose that which of the following above is correct so let me tell you that both of these statements are wrong it is not a subsidiary but it is an independent or governmental organization and also it is not under any any ministry of consumer affairs and public distribution so it is not under the government controlled it is basically an NGO so that non-governmental organization so as the name suggests non-governmental organization certainly the ministry will have not no role in it so the answer would be both uh, sorry D sorry because they were both are wrong so answer would be D that is none none is correct so justification is given ever given you given to you that it is basically an Indian association uh, Indian NGO that started from Rajasthan uh, uh, and now it has spread its uh, arms in various 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 uh, 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 various territories and also its vision is consumer sovereignty so it is it it, it conducts policy research and evidence based advocacy advocacy for policy and practice changes to bridge the gaps between core and the periphery and that 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 between the state and the non state actors so let's move on to the third question the third question is if india finds china is over subsidizing subsidizing its solar cell manufacturing industry to boost its export which of the following actions can be taken by india a. India can move the WTO citing the violation of trade rules. B. India can raise dispute under the United Nations General Assembly. Uh, uh, C. India can uh, drag uh, China to the United Nations Economic and Social, uh, Social Council to settle the dispute. D. It, it cannot take any action against China as later is the no, not the member of uh, WTO. So let me tell you clearly friends that uh, China is a member of WTO. So certainly D is wrong and also friends United Nations General Assembly doesn't and also in similar manner United Nations Economic and social council doesn't settle any dis any kind of dispute but yes both India and China are party to WTO that is World Trade Organization and it, uh, it is also basically uh, an intergovernmental organization that monitors the uh, trade uh, trade kind of tra tra trade regime the world over so yes India can raise uh, the dispute in, uh, in in the WTO uh, citing the violation of trade rules so solution is a so this is all about your third question let's move on to the fourth question and uh, the fourth 
क्वेश्चन इज द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइज एंड अनऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर इन इंडिया इज मेनली बेस्ड ऑन ए एम्प्लॉयमेंट कंडीशन बी वर्किंग ड्यूरेशन ऑफ द फॉर्म सी ग्रोस आउटपुट ऑफ द फॉर्म डी नेट प्रॉफिट ऑफ द फॉर्म आफ्टर पेइंग टैक्सेज सो लेट मी टेल यू फ्रेंड दैट वी डिफाइन ऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर एंड अनऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर ऑन वेल डिफाइंड क्राइटेरिया सो बेसिकली ऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर इज दैट सेक्टर विच विच कम्स अंडर द गवर्नमेंट रेगुलेशन वेरियस एक्ट एंड ऑल्सो इट इज मोर काइंड ऑफ मोर इट इज इट इज इट इज इट कम्स अंडर फॉर्मल इकोनॉमी बट वेर एज ऑनऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर इज इट इज इज इट इट डजन कम अंडर गवर्नमेंट रेगुलेशन एंड गवर्नमेंट रेगुलेशन आर नॉट एनफोर्स एंड दे आर रेयरली ऑब्जर्व और फॉलोड एंड ऑल्सो देर इज नो सिक्योरिटी ऑफ टेन्योर एंड ऑल्सो इन ऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर देर इज अ लिमिटेड नंबर ऑफ आर्स वर्किंग आर्स बट इन ऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर देर इज नो सच लिमिट एंड ऑल्सो इन ऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर द वेजेस आर पेड इफ यू इफ यू वर्क ओवर टाइम बट इन अनऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर दिस इज नॉट द केस सो बेसिकली इट इज इट इज अ डिफरेंस इन द एम्प्लॉयमेंट कंडीशन बिटवीन द ऑर्गेनाइज एंड अनऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर सो दिस डिस्टिंगशन कैन 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 हेल्प वन टू आइडेंटिफाई अ पर्टिकुलर सेक्टर वेदर इट इज टू टू आइडेंटिफाई अ पर्टिकुलर सेक्टर टू नो वेदर इट इज अर्गेनाइज सेक्टर और अनऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर सो वुड बी द आंसर दैट इज एम्प्लॉयमेंट कंडीशन सो हेयर इज द एक्सप्लेनेशन सो सेक्टर विच इज रजिस्टर्ड विद द गवर्मेंट इज कार्ड एन ऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर सो हेयर इज द मेजर काइंड ऑफ कंपेरिजन सो मीनिंग इज बेसिकली ऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर विच विच एंड विच द एम्प्लॉयमेंट कंडीशन आर फिक्सड एंड एम्प्लॉयज हैव अश्योर्ड वर्क एंड दैट इज कॉल्ड ऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर बट इन केस ऑफ अनऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर द स्मॉल स्केल एंटरप्राइजेज फॉर एग्जाम्पल और यूनिट्स दे आर नॉट रजिस्टर्ड विद द गवर्मेंट एंड द एम्प्लॉयमेंट टर्म्स आर नॉट फिक्सड एंड दे आर नॉट सर्टनली नॉट दे हैव सर्टनली नॉट द अश्योर्ड वर्क so this is major distinction which you can see in the explanation pdf so let's move on to the next question the next question is fifth the rupee is accepted as a medium of exchange mainly so here the question is asked that in india we accept rupee as the medium of exchange so what is the main reason behind it first indian law legalizes the use of rupee as a medium of payment second money supply in the form of rupee is unlimited third production cost of uh, uh, rupee is equal to its value so let me tell you friends that we uh, have to choose the correct statement uh, statements from these statements so let me tell you that most of you people will say that one and two would be the answer but let me let me let me uh, question let me uh, clear uh, clear your doubt that certainly second is not responsible for for accepting rupee as a medium of exchange so Uh, why it is not accept why it is not the case yes uh, rupee can be printed un in unlimited uh, t uh, terms uh, we can we can un uh, we can we can uh, we can kind of uh, we can produce rupee uh, 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 by by use simply using simple printing machines but uh, then then why it is not uh, that, uh, that that it is not accepted as a medium of exchange mainly because of this because friends there are lot of commodities that are as such available in in abundant quality uh, quantity so they are not in limited quantities take for example water so it is in abundant quantity but it doesn't make it eligible for 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 the, for, the, for, the, for this purpose that it would be entitled to entitled to kind of we can say uh, uh, the 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 medium of exchange status so that is the case so that's why second is not correct third certainly third, third is not correct because production cost of uh, so suppose uh, a 2000 rupee not has to be produced so obviously 2000 rupee not when it is produced uh, so so it 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 it, it, it may cost very less but its actual market value is very high so certainly third is not also the answer so second and third is uh, incorrect so the answer would be uh, one only that is uh, uh, c so here is the explanation so uh, basically this uh, medium of exchange uh, uh, rupee has been uh, authorized as a medium of exchange it is it is enforced it is uh, or it is kind of uh, regulated by rbi on behalf of the government based on the law so there is no no other individual that can produce rupee and uh, that's why fake currency is uh, is 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 kind of uh, printing fake currency is a crime so also friends uh, i has i have already told you that explanation about this let's move on to the sixth question sixth question is consider the following about the national infrastructure and investment fund so there are certain statements about national infrastructure and investment fund so these are first there will no, there will no contribution by the government here it is, it is mistake it must be there will be no contribution by the government in the fund uh, second the fund aims to attract investment from both the Domestic and international sources. Third, NIIF, NIIF will 
also fund centrally sponsored schemes in Indian states as part of its corporate social responsibility. So we have to we have to choose the correct uh, correct statements. So let me tell you, friends, that the first is clearly wrong. Because yes, there is a government contribution in the national uh, national infrastructure and investment fund, and, and government holds forty nine percent of its shares. So so certainly one is incorrect. Regarding second friends, uh, second statement is correct. Yes, the funds aim the fund aims to attract investment from different domestic and international sources, so that uh, the, the 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 money that has been raised, the funds that are raised, are then then they can they could be utilized in the uh, in the infrastructure building projects. So second is correct, but let me tell you third is the incorrect because the national investment in infrastructure uh, fund is basically far for this creating this infrastructure, and certainly centrally sponsored schemes in Indian states uh, 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 these well they, it is not made for welfare policies or welfare schemes to fund welfare schemes. Sir, it is only for investment in in the infrastructure projects. So the answer would be uh, the the second only. So the answer is two uh, second only that is B. So solution will be B. So here is the uh, the in detail explanation so it was basically created in july 2015 and government holds for 9% of its share in it so also it can raise uh, 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 money from different sources both bilateral and uh, both both your domestic and international and for that matter uh, the the investors can invest in it the sovereign fund or quasi sovereign funds can invest in it or bilateral or multilateral investors can invest in it and similarly the domestic sources like cash rich psus pension funds provident funds national small saving funds will be uh, will be able to pick up the stake in the fund so it is basically uh, to, through this accumulated money that uh, that the, uh, this this investment fund will 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 uh, will kind of invest in commercially viable projects so it will not be investing in any social welfare schemes so here is a basic learning so it is basically fund raising through suitable uh, instruments so it is uh, it, it it has multiple roles but one of its most important role is to consider and approve candidate companies institutions projects including state entities for investments and periodic monitoring of investments so obviously as it is involved in the business of investment so certainly it, it it would it would think think before investing in any business or any uh, infrastructure project so it its important duty is to kind of uh, uh, Look into the uh, look into the project for investment and also the, the prodding monitoring of its investments. So it is uh, it is also investing in the corpus created by asset management companies for investing in private equity. So it also prepares a shelf of infrastructure projects and providing advisory services. So it it does not only support uh, the 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 infrastructure projects through funding. It also supports th them through through advisory services services. So let's move on to the seventh question. The seventh question is consider the following statements about various organizations. Dealing in dealing with statistical statistics in India, so there are certain organizations, the different organizations that deal in uh, statistics in India. So we have to consider about these statements. So friends, these 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 uh, statistics organizations are quite important these days because the NSSO has been in news uh, from uh, quite a few days back. Um, and uh, first statement is NSSO is an organization under the Ministry of Statist Statistics, Planning and Program Inter Implementation. Second is National Statistical Commission was set up on the recommendations of Rangarajan Commission. Third, Central Statistical Office conducts annual survey of industries. So we have to choose the correct answer. So let me tell you that uh, the uh, the correct answer is yes. NSSO is an organization that is under that comes under the Ministry of Statist Statistics, Planning and Program Im Implementation. Similarly, this National Statistical Commission. Uh, it it comprises of one part-time uh, uh, chairman and four-time part-time members and one ex officio member. So yes, it was set up uh, under the recommendations of Rangarajan Commission. And CSO is also involved in the uh, it, it 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 conducts annual survey of industries apart from uh, apart from calculating the index of industrial production and the consumer price index and all these things. So this is about your. Uh, 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 question so all of, all of these uh, are correct so d is the un correct answer so as i have told you that nss is the largest organization in india conducting regular socio economic service and similarly this uh, nsc uh, national statistical commission was set up under under this uh, rangarajan commission uh, uh, commission's recommendation so yes there is a post of chief Stat statistician of india that is specifically created as uh, as the head of the national statistical office and he is the secretary of the commission also so this is is basically about your uh, question so let's move on to the eighth question eighth question is consider the following matches of cooperatives with which uh, with uh, with what they are associated with first krishk bharti cooperative limited fertilizers second mother dairy 
uh, National Dairy Development Board. So here we have been asked that uh, which, uh, the, the following corporate cooperatives are linked with certain certain other associations or organizations, then and which of the following is correctly matched. So let me tell you, friends, that both is both are correct. Krishk Bharti Cooperative Limited is basically a fertilizer company that engage that it, that is engaged in the business of producing mainly urea. So it 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 it, it produces fertilizers, yes. And also let me tell you, friends, that it is totally non-governmental entity. Government has no role in Krishk Bharti Cooperative Limited. It is a basically a cooperative society uh, kind of registered under the uh, uh, Multi-State Cooperative Society Act. So this this first is correct. Regarding second, friends, the second is also correct. Yes, Mother Dairy was created in the National Deve Dairy Development Board. So it is a kind of it was created as a, uh, as a subsidiary of National Dairy Development Board, and uh, and it, it 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 was created during the era of Operation Flood when when efforts were made to 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 kind of. Uh, uh, increase India's self-sufficiency in milk. So A is correct. That is both one and two. So this, uh, uh, sorry, here here we have been asked select the correct answers. D none. Here friends, it is by mistake mm, I mentioned that it is none. Uh, uh, let me check. Let me check. Let me check. Yeah, friends, this both are correct. So why it has been friends it has been a typing error so it would be a so it is a, co a cooperative society registered under the cooperative societies act and this uh, this national sorry mother dairy is national dairy development board so this would be uh, the correct statement so this is this is a, this is an a printing error so please uh, ensure that here it is a so let's move on to the ninth question the ninth question is consider the following about self help groups in india so we have to consider certain statements about self help groups uh, first they are governed by the same constitutional provisions that regulate cooperatives second a self help group can supply uh, can and can apply for credit support to niche banks like the bharti mahila bank third self help groups must be compulsorily registered with the government uh, with the government so we have to choose the correct answer so let me tell you friends uh, that first is clearly wrong because uh, the, these cooperative societies are governed by the constitution by the constitution itself the constitution creates a fundamental right to form the constitutional uh, so to form cooperative societies but let me tell you friends that self-help groups are not not uh, not regulated under constitutional provisions so they are kind of voluntary organizations if the, if you're willing you can make it and yes friends uh, there are many there are many self-help groups that that get credit support to from niche banks like bharti mahila bank so so Bharti Mahila Bank provides a kind of uh, lo loans to multiple self-help groups of women uh, at, at comparatively uh, uh, softer terms, at comparatively softer uh, interest, interest rate. So yes, second is correct. Regarding third statement, let me tell you friends that it is not necessary for self-help group to register with the government. So it may or may not register itself. So only second statement is correct. So the answer would be here, the C, that is second only. So the solution is C. So here I have been, uh, provided you in detail explanation. So let's move on to the 10th question. 10th question is which of the following is not an example of, of a trade barrier? A allowing only a fixed amount of commodities to be exported or imported irrespective of supply demand situations. B capping foreign direct investment in sensitive sectors. C imposing unreasonable standards on quality of imports. D tax on imports. So here we have been asked that which of is, is not a trade barrier. So let me tell you, friends, that uh, yes, D is a trade but kind of trade trade barrier because when you import when you import uh, impose tax on, on on particular kind of imports, so certainly it will it will raise the cost of those imports in in the market and and people will not uh, will will not demand for it so certainly it is a it is a trade barrier regard, regarding c yes friends it is also the case for example uh, there are there, there are sometimes unreasonable standards that are that are applied on uh, on india's uh, india's uh, 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 kind of food proce food processed foods uh, for for the purpose of uh, kind of saving saving the saving the uh, uh, the domestic market by by your, your by the European Union or sometimes by America also. So also friends, uh, let me tell you that uh, A is also under this uh, this this uh, trade barrier because it um, it it, uh, it is a kind of quota barrier. So quota barrier is that in which you impose limit on a, on on the on the on the quantity on the quantity that that can be imported. Uh, of a particular good in in the in a particular country. So friends, both the, the is O A C A C D all are the uh, examples of trade barrier. But B is not example of trade barrier because capping foreign direct investment in sensitive sectors. It is a case of investment. It is a case of investment policy. So it is not. It doesn't come under this trade barrier issue and all these things. So B is the answer. So as I have already provided you that's in detail explanation. So there is no need to 
read here so friends this is all about today's lecture and uh, of economy and in case you like this lecture please like it share it with your friends and if you like the questions uh, then please uh, share it with your friends and also if you have any suggestion then you can tell in the comment box lastly friends let me tell you that if you want to subscribe to the pdfs of these mcqs then you can contact us at this num uh, at this number or the email id that is uh, email id is achieveies21 at the rate gmail.com and contact number is 8968426481 so this is the contact number so friends if in case you want to subscribe the pdfs of these mcqs then you can contact us at this number and let me tell you that it is a paid subscription we will charge certain minimum amount from you people uh, in for, for for providing you the pdfs because as we are putting in lot of efforts so certainly we need some some income support to sustain ourselves and to sustain our continuity so for that purpose in case if you want to uh, subscribe to for the pdfs then you have to pay certain minimum amount which we will tell when you will message us and let me tell you friends uh, that how these pdfs will help you because uh, let me tell you that at at the end of the day when your exam will be near you will not be able to see these 25 to 30 minute long videos or you will not be able to re uh, read the books for example standard books or ncrts because at that time it would be an utter wastage of time because at that time you will have to revise multiple topics so in that case you must have some kind of notes or other thing so for through which you can revise so these these pdfs are in the form of a notes also so they they kind of uh, provide give you the question and uh, and uh, you then go for its answer and then you go for its explanation so in this way you are told that why a particular option is correct and why other option is not correct and in which context they will be correct correct so in this way manner so this this these pdfs can help you uh, in 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 uh, at the time when when your exam will be near because revision is a is a much necessary part of your preparation and revision cannot be done by by following again standard books so standard books are basically for maximum two time reading so after that you must have some kind of notes to revise quickly at least for prelims so may, in case of mains i will not say that so you have you must have some kind of notes so in that case standard books will serve but in case of prelims you must have a concept actual clarity clarity as well as factual clarity so for that case in in that case you need these pdf so if you want to subscribe to them you can contact us at these at this email id or the or the contact number that i have given here so friends this is all about today's lecture if you if like if you if you liked it please like it share it with your friends and also friends please subscribe to our channel and, and also do not forget to press the bell icon because then only you will get all the important notifications relating to upsc csc 2019 so thank you friends thank you very much have a nice day